Hello. In this video, I will be showcasing my spline-based audio occlusion system. This was inspired by an upload from Alex Hines, so feel free to check them out, the link will be in the description. The content is broken up into five parts. What is audio occlusion, and why is this system necessary? A demonstration of the system itself. A code overview. A summary of the pros and cons. The conclusion. You are welcome to skip ahead, however I recommend watching the whole video as it may help give context to later chapters. Put simply, audio occlusion occurs when the sound source is obstructed. The more the source is obstructed, the more occluded it becomes. We can observe this using Unreal Engine's built-in audio occlusion system. When the wall is lowered, the audio is completely occluded. When it is lifted, the audio is not at all occluded. While Unreal does give options for interpolation and volume attenuation, the result is ultimately binary, and the interpolation only acts to mask that change from 0% to 100% occlusion. You can also see that despite adding more walls, the occlusion stays the same. I will begin by playing audio through a static source. I decided to choose Beethoven mainly because it's public domain. In this example, the output occlusion percentage is applied through an RTPC to a low pass filter in WISE, however there is nothing stopping you from applying this to an audio component, or a Metasound source as well. Let's have a listen. As you can see, when I have a line of sight on the audio source, nothing is being changed. When I walk behind a wall, we can begin to see the system in place. I have linked the marketplace asset I used for the path in the description for those interested. Two lines are being drawn from the source to the character's approximate ear location, a direct line, and a path on the floor. For the most part, the system will choose to use the length of the path as a percentage of the source attenuation. If we go around 1000 units away from the source with a max attenuation of 5000, it will return around 20% occlusion, which is correct since 1000 is one fifth of 5000. However, the path alone is not enough in this model. If we walk up and around to the source, the path will get longer while our distance to the source will become shorter. This is why we need an auxiliary calculation, one that relies on the direct line. The calculation for the direct line is roughly the same, in that it uses the distance as a percentage of the total attenuation, but we do have to multiply the result by about 1.5, 50%, to make it match up better to the path value. When the system detects that the path occlusion is greater than the result of the previously mentioned calculation, it will switch over. You can observe this as the direct line becomes green and the path line becomes yellow. For anyone colorblind, refer to the top left debug. If we try and force a long path, you can begin to see why this measure is necessary. It does not take long for the path to generate 100% occlusion. But what happens when we walk somewhere the path cannot reach? Well, the system will once again rely on the direct line, and the debug path will become red to signify that this is the case. Now, what about when we are directly beneath the source? Obviously we cannot use the direct path, it is too short. Well, we'll just use the path, and honestly it doesn't sound too inaccurate. But what about a location under the source that the path cannot reach? We just said we cannot use the direct path, but what about if we multiply it by the obstructions? Well, in some places the occlusion is roughly the same, but in others there is a significant jump. This is because the multiplication per obstruction is so large that one extra wall is making a big impact. Another downfall is clear when we walk to the edge of this room, the sound is around 80% obstructed, even though there is an open space for it to travel through above and in front of us. Let's head further down and see how it sounds. Not too bad. Now, let's try with multiple moving sources and see how the system handles it. 
For clarity purposes, they will be playing different pieces of music. It's a bit of a cacophony, but I feel that the system is handling it well. I won't go too in depth with the code or we might be here a while, but I will give a brief overview. Currently, the system is housed in a function library that any actor can call, as long as they provide an attenuation radius, listener actor reference, and source actor reference. I am aware that this violates some of the solid principles, however, I threw this code together in a few hours, and have not got a chance to tidy things up yet. I have chosen to input my character's head socket into the listener ear location for accuracy, but the source actor location can go here as well. Since WISE allows RTPC interpolation, we can get away with calling this every 0.3 seconds, as long as the player is in range of the attenuation radius. For metasounds and audio component sources, you can use the float interpolation nodes as a substitute. The function initially stores the inputs as local variables, then adds or finds a spline on the actor that called. This spline is just for debugging, so you can remove it. We'll then trace from the source to the ear location and check for any hits, which will decide if we should occlude or not. I was experimenting with multiple traces using an array of vectors, similar to what Quantum Break did, but found this approach simpler for now. If there are no hits, we'll simply return an occlusion value of zero, but if there are, we'll store the hits and proceed to calculating a vertical multiplier that we'll use later. After that, we'll try and find a path from the source to the listener. If we can't find a path, then we'll run some code to decide if we should use our obstruction multiplication based on the vertical multiplier. However, if we can find a path, then we need to check if said path is beyond a reach length. This path can probably be taken out, as it just falls back to the non-reachable code if the player gets too far away from the path. Then, we'll proceed to deciding whether or not we should actually use the path, or if we should use the direct line. In here are also a couple of security measures, such as detecting the long paths. This concludes the code overview. In total, there are a few things this system does well, and a few things it lacks. For the pros, it is scalable and accessible for multiple sources of different types. It supports moving sources. For the most part, it can output an accurate sounding occlusion value. For the cons, it is not fully aware of the environment as much as it should be. There are jumps in the occlusion when switching between the obstruction multiplication and the path calculation. While the calculation and output is interpolated, the detection is still binary, more so with less traces. To conclude, I think that this works very well as a prototype and proof of concept, however a model based on the thickness of the walls and the type of physical material that we trace through might be better. This was the approach used in CSGO, where stone and wood will multiply the occlusion value by different factors. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.